Hello Wanderers and welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series set in the Game of Thrones mod and following House Blackwood of the Riverlands. Now we begin this episode with a bit of an interesting event that will give a little bit of context to what is going to be coming up in this episode. So let's read this event and then see where we go from there. On the road to the holding of one of my vassals, a flash of color among the forest litter catches my eye. I dismount and brush aside dull brown detritus to uncover a five-pointed leaf of red as deep as any ruby. My man and I exchange an excited look. We know of only one type of tree whose leaves remain blood red while its neighbors are green and brown. Searching through dense forest, we discover the impossible, a werewood. Long thought extinct outside the wild north and cultivated gods' woods, these trees are precious even for those who do not keep the old gods, which we do. But this is a tree among trees, enormous, ancient, dignified. None of us have ever seen its like. I cannot imagine how it could have survived the onslaught of the Andals thousands of years ago, but in its presence I understand very well why men came to worship at the roots of the werewood. Such majesty, such power, very interesting indeed, a, a sign, I would think, to any follower of the old gods, uh, a very positive sign, which we shall take under consideration as we prepare for the events of the episode, which, as you all remember, shall involve potentially pressing our claim here on the High Lordship of Southstone. Now, we have been feuding with House Bracken for centuries, maybe even millennia, and this is finally coming to a head here, and we have managed to find good reason, or good enough reason, to give ourselves a claim here to the Lordship of South Stone, to these lands, and say that we are the rightful stewards of those lands, not to kick House Bracken out of their own castle, necessarily, but to just say that we should be the ones ruling over the greater majority of South Stone. And I think that we will be attempting to press that claim. Now, obviously, this would be a little bit of a larger skirmish than even our previous one in which we took the Lordship of Sally Dance. But as we have made ourselves a deal with Hoster Tully to be able to press these claims, uh, we should be able to do so without any trouble, really. Well, any other trouble than what the Brackens are going to give us. Ah, but we do have an interesting event here regarding the White Wolf that we've been hunting for some time. My lord, this search of yours for a mere beast, I have to admit it worries me. My master Ambrose approaches me as I sift through reports of new sightings of the White Wolf. Evidently, anything that demands so much attention could be sent by the Night's King, as if its existence is not a sign of the Nameless Gods himself. The Wolf is a messenger from the Old Gods, and we could say it is none of your business. You're all right, what? No, I think the Wolf is a messenger from the Old Gods. Let's see if he... And he thinks that we may just be correct. So, very positive signs here, and I think those signs are suggesting that it would be wise for us to press our claim here in South Zone. So, as you can see, the Brackens do have a bit of some allies here. Let's see, they're allied with House Plum. Got a few troops there. And let's see who else they have. And with House Vance of Wayfarer's Rest. Quite a few troops there as well. Uh, we have a significant amount of allies, as you can see, and we will probably use call upon a few of them at the very least to push this claim. So without any further ado, we are going to we are going to do that. So we have declared war on Lord Jonas. Um as I mentioned in the last time we fought one of these, I don't necessarily see this as all-out war, and although we are going to all be raising our full amount of troops, I picture this more as a 
bit of a smaller skirmish. Uh, the game doesn't necessarily reflect that, but considering the context of Game of Thrones, All Out War doesn't necessarily make sense. But this kind of skirmish between lords uh, would be, I don't think, necessarily unheard of, though probably somewhat uncommon. Uh, we are going to, I mean, we could, well, we can't really afford any other regiments, I don't think. Not right at the moment, so, and I don't think we're going to need them. We're going to raise our armies. We're going to look to our allies and call some of them into war. Obviously, we're going to call in... Uh, oh, yeah, we can't call in Harrenhal because Lord Walter, during our little wait to prepare for this, became our rival. So he will not be assisting us, interestingly enough. So we're going to have to look to our other allies. Well, we're obviously going to call in Whale Root. They have uh, plenty of troops, uh, which will be of assistance there. And let's see, we could probably call in... Let's call in Old Town this time, just right off the bat. Uh, I'd rather just ensure our success rather than risking risking another lengthy, prolonged war. So we already raised our troops. We're probably going to go right in and try to hit House Bracken before they can team up with their allies. Although it looks like Wayfarer's rest is already already coming in so yeah i don't think we're gonna get to to them we're gonna have to wait till our allies can meet up with us here they're gonna siege down sally dance but that's fine i'm willing to wait for our allies to join up with us and then we'll move in together as part of a coalition of troops here. Probably once we have Whale Root in there, I think we'll have enough. But looks like Old Town is on its way with their massive army here. So we should be all right. Uh, House Plum is moving in too. So we might have to wait for the forces of Old Town before we're able to take on this army here. Oh, here's an interesting event. Small changes in dialects, slightly different customs. It was easy to miss at first. Over time, small changes led to large ones. And now the Riverlanders living in Fair Market have become, have begun to identify themselves as Fair Marketers instead. The Fair Market Riverlanders seem to be developing a growing appetite for verbose laws, long chronicles, and labyrinthine charters taking comfort in a society run by ever-expanding formal practices. Whether out of skillful manipulation or genuine desire to lead his people into a new era, Lord Oliver has positioned himself as the leader of this cultural awakening. So it seems like uh, the Riverlanders of Fair Market have kind of make it, made a name for themselves as being a little bit more unique among the rest of the Riverlanders. I didn't think those kind of events would happen in here, but uh, I think that's a pretty interesting little development there. So they did siege down Sally Dance. I'm not too upset over that. Looks like they're actually coming in here. How far away? Okay, Old Town is close. Yeah, looks like they're coming in. I think Old Town is going to get here in time. We'll see though. Maybe not. Come on, Old Town, get here. Oh, looks like we might not. We might just have been a little too slow come on old town they're almost there oh and they just made it in time <laughs> just as our forces were about to be routed the forces of old town came in hitting lord jonas from behind lord jonas the smelly he, he's earned a bit of a nickname there apparently and now with our combined forces we turn back pinning the forces of South Zone in between us and the forces of Old Town. And I think that that shall indeed be a success. Uh, 
close to the old cons we are. So here we go. That battle was a success. Just in the nick of time, Old Town did manage to get here. Here we go. Ah, and we took... Oh, very interesting. We actually took Lord Jonas's daughter and his heir, Barbara, hostage after after that battle. I guess she was with the forces of Sosun there. So that's a pretty important hostage, actually. So I think if we go and siege down Southstone itself, that will probably give us everything we need to uh, win this war, I imagine. So we're going to go and siege down Southstone. Uh, we'll let time pass by a little bit and come back in when the siege is a bit closer to being done with. As you can see here, some of the Southstone forces have engaged us in a battle there. And it looks like uh, one of our men could be knighted here, Lord Harris of Medford. Very well, we will knight him. Proved himself in battle. I'm sure you would like to look at these battles too. Let's look at the, the first one, the larger one, see what happened with the captains there. Ah, Brendan making a name for himself, our eldest son here, uh, as you can see making a name for himself in that battle with a few uh, men slain on his own. Um, looks like no lords were killed in that battle, luckily. Uh, what about in this one here, this most recent one, as they tried to lift the siege and uh, unfortunately were not able to. Well, unfortunately for them, fortunately for us. The Dennis was slain in this battle by Damon Viprin. They had a lot of they had a lot of knights, way more than we did, that's for sure. Oh, it looks like they looks like our son was captured. Our second son, Lucas. Huh. That's unfortunate. We'll have to ransom him free after this war is over. They're trying to lift the siege here on Sostone, but I don't think they're gonna be successful. So there we go. Let's, uh, let's get this siege ticked down and put this war to an end. So here you can see the siege is almost done and within the next few days here, indeed we have captured it, captured a few members of House Bracken as well. I think once the city of Burning Main is sieged down, that probably should be enough. And indeed it is. Southstone, despite their allies, was not able to overcome us. And although they almost had success in that first battle, they were not expecting the forces of Old Town to join us just in the nick of time. And here we go. We can enforce our demands. All hostages taken by the war participants will be released. We get the High Lordship of Southstone. We get fame. Our allies shall share some prestige and the scales of our rivalry are tipped in our favor so look at that blackwood Vale has expanded quite significantly here as you can see to encompass all of blackwood Vale and the lordship of southstone as well puts us in a pretty powerful position although i'm sure that we will be Finding ourselves with plenty of plenty of rebellious actions from our new vassal, Lord Jonas the Smelly of Stonehead. But that is something I'll we'll deal with in in the future here, as we need to essentially gain some uh, solidity to our realm here. Uh, we do need a Castellan. We are not going to be naming Lord Jonas our Castellan. Certainly not. How about uh, Lord Tommen? You would be pretty good here. No, I think we will name Lord Roberts of Deadsteady. That's a pretty good one here. Uh, indeed, I wouldn't mind if you were to... Yeah, let's see here. Fortify the defenses of Raventree. Probably not actually that, that useful. Overseeing realm. You know what? I think that presiding over the council, that would be pretty good. It's going to increase our opinions with the various lords on our council. We do need a new spy master. So Lord Tommen of Mudgrave, you will serve us well in that. 
Could we get somebody else as our admiral? Probably. Let's see here. We could put our son as he is serving as the marshal right now. I'm actually, I'm actually fine with putting our son as the admiral, and then putting one of the lords, or in this case, a lady, Lady Alice of Funny Tree, as the marshal. And that looks like a pretty good council here. So hopefully they will serve us well as we guide Blackwood Vale into its new future here. And you can see factions just being created against us right away here. Uh, let's see, Liberty Faction. Ah, and somebody wants to install Lord Tristi Tristopher of Old White on the Southstone throne. Well. Good luck with that. I'm sure that uh, we will deal. With, we will have to deal with that in time. We do need a new maester, so we'll send for one to Old Town. And it's a Reachman named Gareth. He looks skilled, so I'm uh, very good. Let's uh, bring him in. And Lord Brendan of Flockshade here. Uh, I'm wandering down a bustling alleyway with my friend Brendan when he suddenly disappears. I turn to see him deep in discussion with a merchant whose wares appear to consist mostly of curious little trinkets. Brendan, his transaction completed, ambles back to me, thumbing his new purchase distractedly. It is a religious icon, not of your old god's faith, my friend, but of mine, he explained. A smile crosses his face as he catches a glimpse of my own symbol suspended from a train around my neck. I've always appreciated how you treat me so well, despite our... Theological differences. Well, if Brendan isn't so bad, then I suppose we can probably probably get this uh, tolerates heathens. I mean, the faith of the seven and followers of the old gods do usually get along relatively well in the lore. I mean, in the modern times, obviously not as much previous to this. Please, Lord Hostine Mules. Oh my god. Our, our younger brother is mewling. This insane grudge has got to stop. I am scared to go anywhere, and I jump at the merest mention of a bracken. My brother is clearly shaken. I am torn between the risks posed to my family and the need to teach Lord Jonas a lesson. We could temporarily end this rivalry, I suppose. We must finish what we started, or it is time that this is done with. I'm curious here. Do we get any, like, bonuses? For this feud here, as you can see, ongoing house feud, your family views house bracken as enemies and will receive rewards for besting them. So currently we are winning against house bracken, but I'm not sure where to look to see where we would be getting these rewards or what would that would entail. So if you happen to know a little bit more about this mod and have some idea of what kind of rewards we might get for that, or if that's been implemented yet, then just let me know. But uh, let us see here. What, what could be done? I suppose there's something to be said now that we are, have taken over the Lordship or the High Lordship of Southstone that we could try to find peace here uh, and potentially potentially end this rivalry at least for a short time as has happened many times in the history of the feud between house bracken and house blackwood so you know i think we might actually we might actually do that and one thing i would like to do potentially to to seal that would be maybe to arrange for a betrothal between my daughter. Mm, they won't accept. Let's see. Ah, the fe there we go. Now, they will accept now that the feud is, is done with just barely. But yeah, we will seal this piece between our houses with a betrothal between the grandson of Lord Jonas and our daughter. So, peace, peace has come. 
to to our land some some level of peace anyway and this should probably give us a a little bit of leeway when it comes to all these factions that are being created against us now that the lord jonas has accepted the fact that he he simply can't defeat us or we have crushed his forces and crushed his will and now we are the lords of these lands now as we let a little time pass and we can get rid of some of these notifications here because there are certainly a lot of them so let's get rid of those and one thing that some of you do did want to look at was how events were going in the rest of the Seven Kingdoms. As you can see here, King Robert is still ruling in the Runes of King's Landing. Uh, you can see he's got his children here, Prince Malden, uh, Prince Davos, Prince Stefan. Uh, he's got quite a few children here presumably from Cersei Lannister, but they, well, I suppose Prince Stefan here has a little bit of his father's look, but uh, Prince Maldon, he's got a little bit of a Lannister look to him, wouldn't you agree? Hmm, very interesting indeed. Um, some of you were curious about uh, Stan, uh, King Robert's brothers here. Uh, Renly here, Lord Paramount Renly, is ruling the Stormlands, um, married to Lady Paramount Eleanor, and they have one child here already, Lord Rogar, uh, ruling well there, but interestingly enough, and some of you were very curious as to what happened to Stannis, Stannis is ruling Gaston Grey, which for those of you who know your Game of Thrones, this is actually like a prison island. I do not know how this came about, how the brother of the king of the Seven Kingdoms is now ruling this prison, or essentially, I guess, the, the, former, the, the warden of this prison here in Dorne. No idea. I think probably Stannis must have uh, ended up in the court of the Prince of Dorne and then was given Gaston Grey. Very interesting turn of events here to, to see how that turned out. Obviously, things here in the Reach, everything seems to be going fine under Lord Paramount Maith. Westerlands were ruled by Tywin still, of course. Jaime Lannister dead, but looks like Tyrion the Imp will eventually take over. And Tyrion's got a few children himself, actually, with his wife from House Payne. As the days pass by and I hear nothing of the White Wolf, I grow restless. Surely someone must have seen it. What could happen if we were to... I think we will send, yeah, let's send Lord Robert to to find word of the White Wolf. So, as you can see, our Lord Titus of House Blackwood here has a little bit more gray in his beard than when we last left him. Many years have passed since the previous events and Lord Titus has lived a mostly peaceful life in the meantime. Uh, he has set out here on a hunt and once again in search of that white wolf but what he has found instead appears to be some poachers. Poachers here in the Lord's Wood? They huddle together as I ride up with my guards making a poor job of hiding the dead wolf behind them. We did not do this your mercy. Their blades and bows belie their word. A few options here. We could say the animal is mine, along with a fine for their lives. Or we could even hire them as guards or warriors in our army. There's also this option here. That they will hang and their villages will pay. Now, I don't think we would necessarily choose this option normally, except for the fact that you can see here 
that these poachers come from the lord lordship of Stonehenge. I suspect that Lord Jonas of House Bracken has sent out these poachers on purpose and thus believe that a little bit extra punishment may be necessary. So obviously poaching is not acceptable and so we shall have to do what needs be done here. Lord Jonas can't simply think that he can do whatever he wants behind our back. We do need to keep that rebellious lord in line. And he has been relatively quiet in the many years since we took over the Lordship of Southstone, and we have done our best to keep things that way. Uh, Pieces here in the Seven Kingdoms uh, and as our hunt draws to an, uh, an end and we return home invigorated, we have some decisions to make here, not necessarily important decisions for our lordship, but just in the general direction of where our family goes from here. As you can see, Our eldest son, Sir Brendan Blackwood, has born a few children, uh, though one of them out of wedlock here, Tallard Rivers. Uh, Of course, our second son, Lord Lucas of Horses Halt here, a few children himself. Uh, One of our daughters even married to Prince Davos of the Iron Throne, one of the sons of Robert Baratheon. Uh, We ourselves have actually made friends with King Robert, somewhere in the meantime here at a feast, I believe. And overall, House Blackwood has set itself up in a position of significant power here in the Riverlands. In fact, other than the Tullys themselves, I suspect House Blackwood would be the most powerful house in this region, certainly. Uh, Probably a relative position to the uh, House of Hightower here in the Reach, uh, essentially being the second most powerful lords in that part of the land. Well, we are the second most powerful lord here in the Riverland. Uh, We do have an event here. My wife, Olene, approaches me as I sit by the window. You haven't been the same since since what happened. She doesn't say it, but I know she is referring to when my mother, Leanna, died of old age. Perhaps you need someone to talk to. I could be that someone who can visit family. And that sounds nice, perhaps, or my troubles are my own. I suspect that old Lord Titus of Blackwood, in his arrogance, uh, would see himself as someone who does not need to be coddled in his grief, and though that may be the better option, uh, we are going to choose the opposite and suggest that our troubles are our own. Luckily, we have accomplished our many goals in the lifetime here of Lord Titus, vanquishing House Bracken and putting them in their place. Our house is well established for the future, and... As far as things go, I suspect that as Blackwood will continue to make a name of ever more power and influence in the Seven Kingdoms. But that will not be in this playthrough. Indeed, we will be ending our Blackwood series here and continuing on with a new series in the very near future. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you for watching this far. And until the next one, We'll see you then.